what we're paying now. So that's my quick very on the fire station. Uh, I don't know if you want to do question and answer here, um, Mr. President, or. Uh, um, yeah, um, first off, if you're not talking, can you mute yourself? I know people on the phone can't mute themselves, but we're getting some feedback here. Or, I don't know, birds. Who's got a bird? Uh, that you, Carol. Uh, Chad, did you say they'd have direct access on the 101? Or yeah, they own all of that, Nicoxy Creek, and then a good portion from the top of that dip down to Highway 101. That's news because homeowners don't know that. But okay. Well, there's again, and what I think what people need to understand is this is so preliminary, and there's right. so many variables, but it is it is a positive thing so far. Okay. Um, do any of the other commissioners have a question for uh, Chad about this? Where does the planning commission fit into this, if at all? The planning commission will be integral. Uh, the urban growth expansion, or, I mean, Carol, maybe you could answer this better than I could. But the urban growth uh, expansion would be a big deal. Uh, that would be public notice. That would be meetings. Uh, with this, uh, the planning commission, and then it would need to move up to city council and public meetings. Okay. Carol, do you want to add anything? Well, I just said, uh, it, Lori, will entail a, a very close look by the state, that's LCDC. Every time you expand your urban growth boundary anywhere, it's everybody in the state looking at it because um, it's not ideal. It's not an ideal. Uh, situation unless you need the land and uh, so we have to be able to show that we need the land uh, for housing and that will be the proof uh, of whether or not we can expand the boundary so if you will be, yeah because one of the things that is occurred now is that we know where the barriers lie both in the front the homeowners association and the, and the area. We're going to do another survey here talking about the new location and old location a little bit. But I think now that we have that letter where the owner is denying us uh, the sale of that property, the LCD maybe, you know, that gives us a little bit better pace. Um, but we'll see that it's a bit better. And the other planning issue is that the, it'll be a little bit easier. We won't have to change the zone if, in fact, an urban if the urban growth boundary is expanded to bring the property in, to annex the property into the city, we will simultaneously apply a zone to the property then. Uh, and that that's a little bit easier. It's, it's really expanding the urban growth boundary that will will be the test and we we think you know it, it can be done okay uh, any of the many, other commissioners have anything how many acres is this again chad yeah, uh, i think the total acreage on the site is somewhere near 35 uh maybe actually 38 plus 40 and the development part of that is approximately 33. They're looking at, I think, 39,000, actually, the way it kind of lays out with streets, utilities, uh, minus the park, minus the fire station area. So again, 39 to 40 houses is what we're looking at. The other benefit of doing this, as we said in the paper also, is that the city of Gearhart will then have an avenue to extend our water line to the property, paid for by the developer which will create a loop system which will improve the water, uh, our capabilities, uh, emergency access, and quality of the water that uh, passes through that area. Any other questions? Seeing nothing, did you have anything else, Chad? Uh, only that uh, looks like, so far, <clears throat> Uh, Cochran Drive for playground equipment, and uh, the young girl Berkeley, who's a minor general, that um, is uh, also raising money with what's called the Quarter Challenge. She's challenging the community to 
collect as many quarters as we can by April 30th. And her goal is to take all the quarters and put them around so that they, they can make it around the track since that high school. She would then take that money and donate all of it to the city for playground equipment. As of now, uh, members of the community have donated 13650 uh, towards this project. So it's going well. We're going to get into some conversations uh, and we're going to pass this on to the Parks Master Plan Committee so they have this information. And so we've got a lot of planning yet to do. So that's what we're encouraging. I would just add that it would at least temporarily, airily be located in the um, Centennial Park. And if the Parks Committee comes up with a different plan for that area, then it could be moved if it had to be. Uh, and then one last thing is the grade school property. Do you want a little update on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, grade school property owned by Bob Murray. Uh, there is some uh, structures that are going on in the uh, in the back part in the south or excuse me north part of that property it looks like it kind of high fence near eight feet uh, that turns out to be a uh, uh, planter uh, garden uh, area that the Bob is building for his wife so she's going to plant uh, about a hundred varieties of roses and, uh, and uh, well, that'll be something that we'll get the, uh, we were in conversations with Bob Mori just this, earlier this week, uh, maybe the end of last month, no, it was Monday. And uh, I met with him, including Kalina Cochran, uh, Mayor, uh, uh, Mark McFadden, director of the Middle Age Fire Chief, uh, and uh, George Van Hewson was there to listen to the negotiations. And, we thought we had an idea of him uh, potentially doing some sort of donation. Uh, a couple of days later, he, uh, he wrote a letter saying no, in fact, that he wasn't any more interested in that. So he has a plan. As far as I can see, the plan is to leave everything can stop and uh, create some access to the park, uh, but he would control the development of it. And uh, then I think after he developed it the way that he wanted it, without so far what he said was without any ball fields or soccer fields. Um, that he would then ask this city to maintain it, although he would retain ownership. So at this point, uh, you know, I, I don't think we have any kind of negotiation deal with any of this. That's just what happened over the last Okay. That's all. Thank you very much, Chad. Um, commissioners, Austin, this is your time to report about the parks, the Master Parks Committee, if you'd like to. Do you have anything to add? Uh, I just add that we've uh, concluded the survey, public survey, and we've started going through the analysis of that. Um, and we will be the next meeting kind of going through the results and analysis and then um, start putting together, um, start putting together the plan based on that on those results. Uh, we had about 418 uh, surveys returned to us um, and some really valuable information I think that we'll be able to kind of incorporate. And then we hope to even have an additional public period or comment meeting um, where people can kind of put their last two cents in. Um, before the document comes to the planning commission and um we're looking at putting some together some good maps and and trying to kind of look at the demographics that those that survey results kind of came out of and um yeah that's that's pretty much it we're this next meeting that we're going to have uh next week is going to be kind of the big one i think with um just kind of going over all those results and and really going down deep into the document and kind of putting together some solid solid recommendations for the for the report so okay excellent we're, we're glad you're on that committee with your expertise david i saw your hand i just have a, a commissioner comment here and sort of a verbal report is that if no one else on the planning commission knows Ginny and tom didion have been 
volunteering their time and efforts on the COVID vaccination program. And uh, I think we always, I'm with Chad on acknowledging volunteerism, a great thing, and thank you, Jeannie and Tom. Thank you. I, we're, we're vaccinating people in Clatsop County, even picking up some people from out of the area that are sneaking in as fast as we can. And I encourage everyone to get their vaccine. It's it's hitting the younger people now because us senior citizens are smart enough to have already got it, Chad. <laughs> so it's, it's great fun. Actually, it's our social life because we're seeing people we haven't seen in over a year. So um, we're enjoying it. Uh, Terry or Russ, do you have anything? Yeah, this is Terry. I, I'm not yeah. sure this is the time to bring it up for the goals list. Uh, we had that meeting with the city council, I think it was two months ago, time flies, I can't remember, where we had the presentation about our land use and buildable land in Gerhardt. And I think the person who did the presentation raised some red flags for me that really got my attention. It looks like we have enough buildable land through 19 or 2038, but we have a deficiency for multiple use the apartment buildings and that sort of thing and he recommended that we look at our zoning ordinances for residential that we put together a plan to address that problem and then they made some suggestions uh that what we need to do to change our zoning to accommodate that and i feel with the way the world is changing we really need to stay ahead of the curve on this and I talked to Carol about this, she agreed. I talked to the mayor about it and she gave me the green light to make the recommendation that we have Carol put together a presentation or analysis of what the zoning is now so we all understand it uh, and come up with a plan to address the problem and then tell us what we need to do that. Um, so that's what I am suggesting, whether that goes to the top of the goals list or how this works. Uh, but I, I just feel that Gerhardt before used to always be behind the curve and we have been told that this problem is lurking up there. We need to address it and I'd like to get to it ASAP. Okay, Terry, um, let's, let's hold that thought for just a few more minutes. Russ, did you have anything? No, I did not. Sharon, did you have anything? No. <laughs> that's okay. All right. Uh, so the goals list, that's next on our agenda. Carol, I, I oh, Sharon, or, did you have anything? No. Oh, no, okay. Carol, um, Terry's brought up a good point from Terry that was last month, believe it or not. Um, is is that do we have a goal here on our goals list? Is any place close to what Terry's talking about? Um, unfortunately, I don't have the ability to look at the goals list and talk to you at the same time, but. Uh, <laughs> I no, not specifically, and it should be added since we've gotten some very specific recommendations from the consultant okay. um, plan and code changes that we would need to make to uh, figure out how to encourage more affordable housing. And that would be there we go. Thank you, Chad. <laughs> oh, he's good. And looking through here, I'm pretty sure we don't. Well, I'd like to see this a priority because I can see it coming um, where there are going to be places that somebody's going to want to stick apartments or whatever, and they're going to say, hey, you need them. Uh, and they're going to want us to rezone, and we're going to not be able to say, hey, it's already zoned where you can put it somebody else, somewhere else. Uh, and that concerns me. 
Yeah, I, I do see, I'm not, in, hoping not, not to interrupt you, Terry. Uh, in process, item number four, update buildable land inventory and demographic data, which you uh, looked at before last year in September. And then we went ahead and had the report prepared. So now that the report is finished, um, and we know what it says. I think what we probably want to do here is take that item, and it's of course up to the Planning Commission, and move it, um, or, or at least change the wording to indicate that we want to now begin the process of preparing a report and identifying the reports there. All the information that we need is in the BLI report. It's really complete and detailed and so that's the good news the city won't have to spend a lot of money trying to figure out what it is we need to do we just take that bli and its recommendations for the changes that we need to do and and start it at, at the planning commission's direction and or the city council's direction just get the ball rolling well i you know i i'm, I'm not a planner this stuff is sort of greek to me and I guess what I'm asking Carol to do is come up at either the May meeting, possibly, or the one after, uh, and refine this down to what what we have, what we need, and how to get to what we need. So then we can start having an intelligent discussion how to accomplish that. I can do that. You can do that. Yeah. Is it, uh, is everybody on board with this, or am I out in the left field somewhere? Gary, it's David. I agree with you very much. Okay. Uh, I, I don't disagree with where you're going, Terry. I think the only problem I can foresee is that if we're trying to rezone R1 to R2, we may get into a kerfuffle with people living in the R1 in the, in the vicinity, but if we can like Chad mentioned, the uh, development that may uh, house the firehouse, if, if we were able to make some of that R2, or if Maury requests any housing at the schoolhouse site, I mean, my feeling is that we need it, but we're better served if we can find new dirt to zone there rather than rezone what we have. But that's just my opinion. Well, I, you know, Russ, I agree with you, but, you know, I'm kind of in the dark what we have and how to get from what we have to what we need. Um, you know, I, I sat through that report and there were a lot of numbers and all that flying around. Uh, and all it did is raise a lot of issues in my brain. Uh, and Carol's a planner, and I'm hoping she'll be able to sort all that outcome before us, lay it out in simple terms tell us what our problems are and how to overcome those with a plan. That's, I, I that's think that's one of the people idea. Part. And Jenny, uh, what, what the, the mayor did ask me that if we agree to do this and make it a priority, and I, I didn't know this, but you send a letter each month to the mayor or the city council uh, that you just put in your letter what we have agreed to do. But she was all behind this. She thought it was a good idea. Who's that, Polina? Oh. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. Matt, go with Polina. Um, so I, 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 I think this is a good place to go. I know that in some ways um, we may be restrained by the comprehensive plan because remember, it's all about not increasing density. So um, there's, there's going to be things to look at. Um, Carol, could you for our next meeting come up with some wording for that goal so we can put it on our goals list and, oh. and see what we have there um, and, and start working and seeing, seeing if there are some solutions? Because I, I think, Carol, you're looking to see if we have solutions and if we do them, then what we can do. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I, I need to know, you know, Russ raised some issues, you've raised some issues. I know, I don't know what all the legitimate issues are. Okay. And I don't know what the issues are. 
have a plan to solve those issues and then tell us how we can go from there. And, okay. you know, just coming up with wording and a goal, just all we do is have another goal. I, I would like to really get this ball rolling because I can see it coming. I, you know, this is going to be, and it's going to be a lot of work, and we don't even know what the issues are. We can guess, um, but I would really like to get this started. Yeah. I think it's important. Okay. You know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would just uh, make sure a couple of clarifications. It, it's, it's not automatically changing R1 to something higher. So it, this, the specific recommendations were more nuanced than that. Maybe we allow accessory dwelling units on existing lots. Um, it's it's more, uh, it's, it, we don't want to start running around talking about changing R1 at this point. And so what I'd like to do is just get a specific bullet that says, what are we trying to do? And then I'll try to give you an outline of what I think, the, and, and just whittling it all down to a list of items that you would be considering. That would be wonderful because, you know, we can all say there's an issue here, there's a problem there, all that, but I need to have the layman's understanding of what's there, what the issues are, a plan to solve it, and how to carry out that plan. Can do. Yeah. Within the conference plan guidelines. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're not going to get yeah. too deep into the plan analysis yet. I think we just want you, what I would like to give you the tools of seeing what was recommended by housing consultant and what is recommended maybe by the state and the trends a little bit. And then uh, we'll go from there. But the comprehensive plan, well, I'll tell you one thing, if if you make some big changes, the comprehensive plan policies might have to be tweaked a little bit in some specific way. But I'm not, I don't think it's way too soon to say what that right now uh, is. And it doesn't mean higher density off the bat or changing R1 to anything. No, I, I stand that. I just, I don't know what the issues are. And I don't know how to solve the issues once we have them. Okay, I think I think Carol's got a guideline, a place to start, and um, we'll move it forward this, on this. This reminds me when I my first night on the on the planning commission back I don't know three or four years ago. Richard Walsey was that his name? Yes. Uh, you started talking about short-term rentals and I made some comment and he glared at me and said all we do is pick low-hanging fruit and I told him we were chop the tree down and he didn't ever speak to me again <laughs> but I I just I just think that we need to stay ahead of the curve here that's my two cents we'll talk to you still Terry don't worry we'll keep talking to you Maybe uh, that's the problem okay so the goals list, Carol, the up, update buildable land inventory and demographics, demographic data, that is done. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So and we can, so, yeah. We'll move yeah. up. I think what you're saying is, and maybe for your summary of the council, is that you would be moving, taking that out of in process and putting it up as a high priority, if that's what you want. And uh, it's going to be a look at the comprehensive plan and zoning ordinance to amendments to increase affordable housing, something like that. Yeah. Um, I was trying to scratch off something on the goals list is what I was trying to do. <laughs> you know, the, 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 it's okay. updated. Good point. We, that's something totally different. It's, it's the beginning of what we're going to do next. So you could take that off in process and let's get it as a high priority and it was slightly different language. Yes, yes, I agree. I bet you have okay. a consensus on that. Yeah, we're, we're good with that. Okay. Okay. Uh, right, anything else on the goals list? Anything else anyone wants to say? Okay. All right. 
Um, let's move on. Visitors' comments, not related to anything. Uh, I only see RJ here and Joe Beck, uh, so I don't think we have that. Um, public hearings. Um, you have the correspondence from John Banta um, asking for a continuance to May 13th to have the hearing. He has also sent correspondence saying that he has waived the 120-day clock. So, Carol, is there anything else we need to do at this point? At this point, you've already uh, continued this hearing once. Right. So, if you can open, well, so the hearing is open still, and, and you're, you're going to open the hearing, and I uh, propose you make a motion to uh, continue it to May 13th, and that clock is, is not an indefinite clock. It's a 63-day extension of the 120 days. For the record, that makes the, uh, the, day, the date due will be, um, hold on here, August the 3rd, okay. 2021. So do I have a motion from one of the commissioners to that effect, what Carol said? to um to continue the hearing on may 13th and our then final day would be august 3rd i make a motion that we okay. that we uh, approve that that language okay russ is okay. moved and david second all right all those in favor say aye aye opposed nay is there an A? No. Okay. All right. So moving on. Unfinished business. We don't have anything. So we have new business. The A2 conservation zone discussion. And um, to recall last meeting, this came up. I understand some trees were chop down i guess because beavers probably don't work that way um carol i be i believe this would be to you to lead the discussion i i don't know where we're going to go turn yourself unmute yourself so sorry uh, this is a new topic but it's been an issue for a while and from citizens view and others and what we did do there's strange noises going on can everybody mute there there we go uh, and i'm sure you didn't have a chance to look too hard at that long report that was written about two years ago uh, when there were complaints about cutting right cutting trees uh, down in the mechanic of estuary basically around little beach i believe and so there was a request oh my god there at this time to, to bring this report to life i, I believe and look at our comp plan, the state goals, and the A2 zone uh, to figure out if there's some something wrong with the way we are either enforcing vegetation removal uh, uh, or if there's some um, gap in our code that doesn't clearly give us the right to enforce cutting vegetation uh, in the A2 zone. I, I think that's probably a summary of, of the 24 pages. <laughs> and we have some very strong comprehensive plan policies that talk about the importance of both uh, preserving riparian vegetation uh, in the, against our waterways, particularly the code talks about Neocoxie Creek and Mill Creek and does not mention the estuary. And yet the, the policies throughout the comp plan, you know, say, well, you need it not only for 
uh, wildlife and, and riparian habitat uh, preservation, but also to stabilize banks and reduce the uh, water runoff and to um, enforce, or not enforce, to um, help reduce flooding. And I'm not going to go into all those policies now, but when it gets down to somebody potentially cutting a tree that didn't ask the city, that's, oh yeah, good, good. Thank you, Chad. Let's talk about that up to that map. If you're still there and bring it down a little bit for me. Okay. Um, you see that blue, there we go. Okay, well, the, what the other map showed was where this aquatic zone is, and it's the blue A2 that you saw, or, or there you go. The green is, um, is City Park. The blue is the A2 zone, and as you see, it incorpor incorporates, of course, the estuary, but it also gets close to properties and the bank and um, without knowing exact measurements right now, uh, the question is what can be done in the A2 zone when it gets to cutting, when it comes to cutting trees and permitting. And right now the, the, the Neocoxy Creek requirement and uh, in a riparian, situation it's a waterway we're not talking about the dunes necessarily here we're talking about waterways and the mill creek and the palmberg uh, pond are the, the key three areas in the in the zoning code that are riparian uh, and this this is too but it's not exactly neocoxy creek is uh, in the same scenario and it's it's more just the bay uh and what Look, the rule we have right now is that you have to be 50 feet away from a riparian boundary. Uh, if you're within 50 feet, you need a permit to cut a tree, right, Chad? Right. Yes. And, and, and so far that's, that's detailed out with the neocoxy, uh, where it has in our code, it's got to say 50 feet. And again, just to clarify, it says in the comp plan that that shall include the uh, estuary, but the estuary is not in any of the code as far as that setback goes. Yeah, there's a disconnect between the, the broad policy and all the good reasons for the policy and all the good reasons for preserving riparian and the zoning code in this case, in this zone, uh, does not add the A2 zone in that category of, have, of being regulated. And the, so the easiest fix is, I think, Chad, help me, you enforce this every day, um, is to proceed with looking at language in the zoning code that better reflects the comprehensive plan policies and strengthens the regulation of tree cutting in the A2 zone. Uh, yeah, that's that would give uh, the city uh, the ability to enforce the codes if we had one. Uh, the A2 zone, you know, where it could be placed upon is 138 feet away from the Lily property here on this corner. So from the bank, the A2 zone, let's say about 140 feet. So really what it is that you're looking at is a policy to treat this area within 50 feet of the, uh, you know, the bank uh, or some designated area in here, you know, some designated amount of space. Um, but as you can see here from the property line here to the bank, it's just a few feet. So if you put that back at 50 feet, that would be somewhere in here. Yeah, and so Chad is actually referring to an incident that occurred about a month or two ago where some trees were cut. There we go. God, you're good. Uh, thank you. I haven't even seen this myself. And uh, not only did somebody come without a permit 
in the middle of the night or whatever and cut the trees down, but they just threw a lot of it over the bank. Now, is that riparian? I think there's some debate about uh, pine trees being a species, for instance, that is uh, important to riparian. It's not native, but regardless, that's the minutia at the moment. Uh, the, the problem is, um, how do we want to address this? Now, the mayor has suggested you might want to look at recommending a tree commission uh, what did she say? Is it Seaside that has one? Um, and, or, you know, take it on yourselves as another role of the Planning Commission to uh, both establish maybe some code amendments to better, better make the link between their policy and our regulations and or figure out who would be responsible. Maybe it continues to be staff uh, as long as the guidelines are more clear. So can, can I interject? Mm -hmm. Sure. So according to that map, it looked like the tree cutting was actually done in the park zone, not in the acre zone. Uh, All right. Not, so when I, when I did the investigation, I took a look at this. Uh, I used that program, Austin, you might be familiar with Onyx. Yeah. And so it's really good at helping me find boundary lines, but it's not exact. Right. But the trees that were cut were primarily here within the property boundary. Oh, okay. Uh, there was maybe one on the edge that could be on Cesar, your heart right of way. But um, it was impossible to tell without having a survey done, but it was very close. And the trees that were cut were all in here. They were, they, they were fell into this area, and some just right here by this trail here, right where my daughter is. And so city staff, uh, public works went in and cut some of that out. And then they started, uh, after a period of time, removed some of the trees that were in there. Um, I spoke to the Lily family. They weren't aware of anybody who was authorized to cut their trees. So they were concerned initially. Um, you know, people inferred that maybe a property owner, you know, up here that would then have a better view. Uh, but the Lilies said they talked to them and and that wasn't something that we do. And, and then maybe could it be this property owner that was trying to get used down this direction also. That's a possibility. But basically, this tree cutting happened at two, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe somewhere in there, because the lady was walking that area twice that day, and the trees that were cut in between. Um, and we have nobody who saw the tree cutting. We don't know who did it. And uh, we only had circumstantial evidence uh, who it could have been. So we were really up to go forward. So we cleaned that area out forward, and uh, the lift panel was not concerned with uh, taking it any further. Okay, so it was on the kind of property then, one of us. I, I think so. Yeah, I think it was mostly on the property. It was within this area right here. So, Chad, if I understand right, looking at the map here, it there isn't a house there actually. It is, is, is a, there a vacant. House? Okay, so it's vacant property. And isn't there some restriction in the city about uh, trees that are bigger, have more than a five-inch diameter that you have to have permit or? That is the uh, residential area tree cutting uh, process in Deer Heart. Uh, a tree is known as anything at four and a half feet. Anything known uh, that is 12 inches in diameter and bigger, that is a tree. Anything that is 12 inches in diameter and smaller yeah. is not a tree. Uh, we measured these areas we, because we could find the trees and the stumps and took a measure on how far the stump was and up the tree. And none of these trees we found made that criteria 12 inches and more. So you can cut down on your property as many of those as you can. An actual tree, as defined by our ordinance, of 12 inches plus, uh, you can cut five of those down per year on your property without permit. 
Because they looked like trees to me. Um, Sharon. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm confused. Sorry, I'm new to this, but I'm confused because it sounds like we've got two different issues. One is the riparian zone, which applies no matter what zone it's in versus the aquatic zone. It sounds like maybe there are two different things that we're talking about here. I'm, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of created some of that confusion. My apologies. So no, I was just not. looking at the zone was out here. Uh, yeah. This could be a riparian zone, and it was intended to be a riparian zone, but in our zone code, where I can actually uh, enforce, it's the estuary is not called out, only the neocoxy. Yeah. And so you may not even be the zone, the A2 zone. That's the problem, because I don't, we need a kind of an inventory of, are there trees in that boundary down there in the blue? that we need to retain for all the reasons that I mentioned and make sure the code says that. That's one question. The second one, which is as a result of that incident, is um, can we, well, it doesn't matter because it's private property. If it were, we didn't know that at the beginning, Chad, right? I think we, we thought because uh, bank stabilization was an important uh, element of the complaints that we got. You know, just taking those trees out, with, despite how their tree is defined, is is it affecting the bank stabilization of the A2 area? Um, it's not so. Well, yeah. I I would also suggest that. Um, we reach out to the stewardship forester for or Department of Forestry. Um, this, you know, even if it is private property, this would fall under the Oregon Forest Practices Act grounds. Um, any type of estuary or riparian area, um, you could probably even say that, you know, item number. Bullet point number three, which identifies section 6.175, riparian vegetation, 50 foot setback from the Ecoxie Creek. You could just add language in there saying that the from the mean high water line of the Neocoxie and the Ecoxie estuary portions uh, would be your setback. And so that would, you would find that right at the, the bank of the slope there. Um, if you guys know that area that where all the, um, you know, the driftwood, it lines up right there. And so that's your, that's your basically your mean high water, give or take. So you would, that would incorporate all of that into that riparian setback in the 50 foot. If we wanted to change that language to just incorporate it immediately, but this line yeah, is that's that's exactly what we need to do. Take, kind of taking the A two zone out of this, right, and just yeah. add it to the list of the six point one seven five in the zoning code. It doesn't include anything about estuary. It says you know Neocoxie Creek in the estuary estuary portions, but that's just in Neocoxie Creek. We could just say add the language for the Canicum estuary. Yes, that estuary was just too vague there. I don't think it extends. Yeah, well, this part. you know, it's probably estuary up to about, you know, maybe even the Pacific Way, depending on what you know what type of event we're having. But um, mm -hmm. so, so yeah. Carol, and what I think I'm understanding is that some words need to be changed. Um, uh, that's what we think. Yeah, that's what you. Okay. Think. So in the past, where we've had these situations, you've come to us with a, this is my proposed word change to take care of this problem. Mm hmm. Would you like to do that? <laughs> sure, I'll add to my list. Chad, I, I don't. <laughs> 
I mean, Austin's giving some good input. And we've, we've all got some opinions, and we're all certainly flabbergasted with this. Um, but I'm not able to write words for it. But what I understand with all your documentation, and I did read through most of it, is that, you know, there, there needs to be a connect. We've seen that before. The, the connects between the comprehensive plan and all the different things, it just hasn't always happened. It just needs to be updated. This looks like a situation where we just need to update some things. Yeah, better defining uh, what. Okay. And same for the same reason, the plan says it, but the code doesn't list it. So then that's that was the problem. Right. It sounds like we just need to add, add an mechanic and mesh theory into the, into it. That's all we need to add. I think we can. Now, Chad, would would you agree to, on enforcement that that would be enough? Well, it depends on in what you want. If, if it is that you want to protect all of these trees here, I think we should gather some more information before starting in a, an ordinance, potentially. Or we could just go forward with it. Austin's uh, comment about bringing in Forrester that might be able to give us more information about what's really going on here and what the importance of this is. And, uh, and then, you know, look on how it would impact some of these people. Um, yeah. You know, for example, you know, the Pendergrass here wouldn't be able to cut down any trees if we made it 50 feet on their property. So there's just, you know, just a few hanging things, but we could start with the draft if you want, get some more information, and then uh, move on. I have two other points I'd like to throw into this to, for consideration for everybody. And the first one, is how do you measure what the 50 feet is? There's two different ways that that can be measured, and maybe Austin already knows the answer to this. But one of the ways is the slope measure, and the other way is called a horizontal measure. The way that I so, measure is horizontal measure. So I'll take a straight that, line, uh, the horizontal measure. So I'll take a straight line from this point to this point and measure out 50 feet. I don't include the slope. I don't include the terrain. So I'm wondering, okay, so that's great. So I'm wondering if that needs to be also put in the wording. Yeah. Yes. Slope would be yeah. more restrictive, so um, you would get Slope, slope might that? be because if I, if I laid a tape, went up the slope over some hills and down here, 50 feet might only be here. If we go straight line measurement. Right, yeah, sorry. Sorry, the opposite, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just got that confused there. Sure. And, um, then, and, then, and then just one other thing, I'd love to also, if we're going to get the ODF people in, I'd love to get the fish and, the fish and wildlife people included as well, because it clearly states that we're supposed to be um, calling them in for their opinion. Yeah, and that part of the mayor's suggestion takes this whole thing further in terms of uh, considering a tree commission because this tree topic does it cover a lot of different aspects of tree and preservation and so on. And the other one is, do we want to have something like a legacy tree designation? And I know you can't answer those things now, but. Um, it could go a lot further in that in those directions if if that turned out to be important. Yeah, uh, all, all the years I lived in Seaside, I never heard a single thing that the tree committee did, except get Seaside designated as a tree city. Um, You're absolutely right, Virginia. I was actually on that tree commission, and we did not do one thing. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, I would not suggest we do such a thing. Well, I agree. I've seen them too. They have a huge uh, bar to meet first to even get the designation, and then they hand you this plaque, and, and it, it's it's not so necessarily in a very good direction. If, if it's agreeable to everyone, Carol, if you come back to us with your 
adding those words like Austin has suggested. If we don't need to make big changes or it's some words, we need some clar clarification. So for Chad, it makes, we always are looking to make Chad's job easier. Um, but so that also our citizens know what what is and what is not allowed so they don't run up they don't have a visit from chad um is is that appropriate david is that good i agree with that austin you're good yeah and i'm happy to help and provide some language or information if needed so if carol or chad needs any clarification so Okay, Russ? Yes, I think uh, having Carol provide something uh, a little more definitive to, to, to start with would be helpful. The only concern I had is that, like Little Beach specifically, I'd say the mean water line is within 50 feet of, you know, the middle of the yards on most of those houses, uh, the, mean high the mean high water line. So in those instances, most of those people have planted their own trees or landscape. I mean, how, how does that fit into all of this if, if properties develop to within the 50 feet mean water line and it's already, a, a, you know, then, then do we control what goes on on their landscape or is that just something they say, nope, it's already there, leave it alone. That's going to have to be anyway, it's more, more specifically, I, I'm good to have Carol come up with something and discuss all this later, for sure. Okay. Sharon, is that good with you? Yeah, I think to answer what Russ was just talking about, I think it's more a question of taking away rather than putting in landscaping. I don't know if that helps, but... Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying, but anyway, it, it's what is what is there would be our new baseline essentially. So, so Carol, I hate to do that to you because we want to help you, but um, you're the wordsmith, and you understand this. No, I, that's fine. I guess now I would ask, what's the priority here? Because the May meeting is okay kind of right around the corner, and uh, what do you want to work on first? Well, maybe we're probably going to have the Banta hearing, the public hearing, which is going to take some time. And, and then we've talked about um, the doing land. something with the buildable house, the, based on the building, buildable lands inventory that was done. So, uh, June uh, for the tree for the A two issue or the tree issue? Yeah, yes. uh, I I think we can put it off another month without any. Let's hope we don't have any more wild tree cutters. Um. Well, yeah, it's going to take a lot, long ways from there. Um, but sure, I, that just helps me. I think I'll work on the. BLI summary first and what those kind of changes look like. If I can make some progress on this one for that meeting or to begin to talk about it too, uh, I will, but I'll, I'll start on the BLI. Okay. And, and for me, after hearing Austin describe his tree commission experience, I volunteer for a tree commission. <laughs> he wouldn't have to do anything. Exactly, on my resume. Okay. Um, great, David. That's exactly what I used it for, David. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Austin got on the planning commission. <laughs> right. You can get me off. Uh, okay. All right, guys. Um, we're moving on to the end here. Are there any other concerns of the commissions for this evening? No. We're good? Okay, we're done with the meeting. It is 721. We've gone through our agenda. 
Thank you, everyone. And uh, Mad, you'll get an email out to us. And Carol, thank you for putting up with us and us giving you all sorts of things to do. I look forward to it. Thanks for well, this conference is no longer being recorded. You, you in Mexico, Mexico. I missed all that. And Carol. Yeah. Are you, are you in Cancun? No, I'm in Mexico. But I'm coming home on Saturday. Oh well, I was going to say, say hi to Ted Cruz for me. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Bye. 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 Thank you all. Welcome, Sharon.